Uh, this week we are in our Dublin studio. studio. My sitting room. Um, Can we do that together? <coughs> studio. Studio, yeah. <laughs> do an audio scene. Do you not like them? <laughs> no, no, they just, they, they, it reminds me of some kind of animal yeah. with ears. Like There's a lot of really weird kind of like you start start trilling and all this kind of stuff. This is definitely going yeah. to video take time. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, Fintan here from Dancing Cloud. This week I am here with Paul Lees from Bespin Labs, the creator of Patronum, one of the leading Google Workspace uh, tools and solutions. Um, Paul has very kindly come over to Dublin. I think he's mixed it in with maybe something personal as yeah. well. Um, and we're very happy to have him here in the studio. Welcome, Paul. Thank you very much. Yeah. What's, what's the personal thing you've linked this uh, up with? Yesterday was my 19th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. So, uh, yes. Very good. Did you bring your wife with you? No, I've, I've, I've left her at home. <laughs> You're just celebrating. I'm just celebrating. Yeah, yeah, 19 own. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about a couple of different topics. We're going to, you know, cover Google Workspace. You've been in the Google Workspace industry for quite yeah, a long time. Twelve years. Uh, yeah. 2008 was when I kind of sunk my teeth into yeah. Google Workspace, Google Apps. Yeah, as it was. As it then. was back then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same as myself. And um, so we've been in the industry a long time. We're going to talk about you know um, admin tools and and obviously your tool Patronum, which we we have here in the background. Um, and then I think it would be interesting to just talk about like the future of those kind of admin tools and how the the sort of admin role is changing. Um, and I think it, it definitely has changed over over the over the years, particularly with so much remote working. Yeah, now. definitely. I think kind of an interesting concept to, to discuss. Um, but as you know, I like to start with some fun questions first. So, if you could have a superpower, what superpower would it be? Wow, um, a bit of a superhero kind of buff. So, um, you know, I think the the obvious one is is flight. And yeah. all those kind of things, but I'm, I always think flight's cool. Yeah. The only problem is if you don't have invulnerability, you're just going to hit something. Yeah. And, and die. it always reminds, <laughs> reminds me of um, flight and capes. If you think about the Incredibles, yeah, yeah, and all no the flying characters no got pushed into uh, aeroplanes and, yeah, and those kind of yeah. things. But uh, for me, um, I liked the TV series Heroes oh, back yeah. in uh, early 2000s, and right, um, for me, the best character in that was a. a, 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 a Block called a uh, hero Nakamura, and he had the ability to manipulate time and space. Wow! So I like the idea of being able to pause uh, time, yeah. um, move things, do things, um, and then have the ability to travel backwards and forwards between. So he different could times. he could stop time, yeah, and but he could still move. Yes, yes, oh, yeah. interesting. interesting. So it's like being very fast. Yeah, so yeah, you've got quite yeah. a lot of superpowers within one within one mm. kind of skill. That is an so I like the idea one. of that. that is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, and then if you could give yourself um, advice, if you go back 10 years, some about time travel, mm -hmm. if you go back and give advice to yourself 10 years ago, what would it, what would it be? Starting out, say? So. Yeah, being a bit of a hero Nakamura. Mm, um, yeah. I think, for me, I think it's, I, I, and I do have this um, conversation with myself a lot, which is what would you have said? And it's, I think that's because I've got children now who are yeah. starting into the workplace and it's, it's yeah. a case of what advice would I give them? Mm. And then you think, well, what advice would you give yourself if you knowing what you've seen and what you've done? And If I knew what I know now. Yeah, I, <laughs> my worry would be the butterfly effect. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, if I'd have gone back and said, you know, just be mindful of this or just be a little bit braver in this area, yeah. Yeah. what would happen? Where would I be? Would I be sat here right now? Yeah. Uh, or would I be doing something else? I love what I'm doing. Mm. I love what I'm doing now. Uh, I love what I've done in the past. Um, and so I wouldn't really change anything. anything. So I wouldn't want to yeah. wreck that kind of um, where you've ended the up. journey yeah, as to where I'm yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'd just probably observe um, and maybe just have a quiet word and just say believe in yourself a little bit more. Yeah. I think in the early days. 
So I want to talk a little bit about your technology journey, Paul, and kind of how you got into technology. You know, I'm sure you were probably interested in tech as a kid, mm -hmm. same as myself, taking things apart, wanting to figure out how they work. Sometimes I could put them back together, sometimes yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you started in the IT industry in, in the 90s. You worked on kind of, you know, Novell systems, you know, by, yeah. back then in the early days. What kind of got you interested in tech, either as a kid or, or as an adult? Yeah, cheers. Um, I think like, like yourself, um, Breaking things yeah. was um, was where I kind of started. I always remember um, a Fisher Price camera, um, and you press the button, the the flash would spin. Yeah, I, and I always that. I always wondered how that worked. So I uh, <laughs> dismantled the entire thing, found out how the thing worked, put it back together again, but then had a dozen pieces left over. And the thing still worked, <laughs> but I always seemed to have more pieces left over, and that kind of started my kind of journey into exploring how things worked. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've always inquisitive about, you know, breaking things, solving problems. Mm. Um, so I, mm. yeah, a big, a big problem solver. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, my journey of, of technology from a professional perspective started in the early nineties, um, 91, I uh, joined the University of Salford um, as a, I think the official title was network program. Uh, our programmer. Um, so that was the Novell network. It was the Novell systems. network, yeah. yeah so yeah. so the network was based on a Novell network, and I was brought in to be a, a developer. Yeah. Um, done very very little bit of development uh, while I was studying, um, and kind of blacked my way into uh, you know, a <laughs> university um, of all places, and they wanted me to develop uh, software that sat on top oh, of the, okay. uh, the Novell okay. system. Uh, so that gave me a, a, an understanding or exposure to APIs. Uh, previously, you were developing uh, software and you were just using the software program itself to, right. to, to create things. Yeah, yeah. When you bring APIs in, you're then interacting with different other, systems. Other systems. And so in order to understand how these different systems work, um, in order to develop to them, you have to become an expert of the underlying system mm. as well. So mm. I spent a lot of time um, understanding Novell Network, how all the, the protocols worked, um, and then very quickly became like the resident expert. The tools that I developed were designed around um, onboarding users, right, yeah, um, yeah. creating users, giving them file store, mm. uh, allocating them you know, names, email addresses, and all that kind of stuff. That, that's interesting um, considering where your Google oh, yeah, journey I mean, went. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a one-trick pony, to be absolutely <laughs> honest. Um, Back then, I was developing tools that created users. Yeah, now yeah. I'm doing exactly the same, just, same in, just in a different guise. In a different system, um, yeah. You could align the things that I was doing to GAM, if you're familiar with the, yeah, the yeah. Google, yeah, um, Google Apps Manager. Management tool. Yeah. Um, so For it's those very, that very don't similar. Know about us, yeah. yeah so, um, so the tools that I created back then were pretty similar to the to the tools you have now with mm. uh, with GAM. You know, GAM was developed for the university sector. The tools yeah. that I were developing were. University. in the university sector and, and, and they tend that, like in the education industry they tend to be onboarding and offboarding oh, yeah. large amounts obviously of well, users, you, you, you so. lose a quarter of your yeah. user base every, every year, year. Yeah. so you know quarter come in quarter leave and so yeah. you have those onboarding and offboarding issues that you don't necessarily see in a corporate environment mm. and so or you hope not to see yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> COVID maybe and all that kind yeah. of stuff but um so I got a, an understanding and a, and a you know a real appreciation as mm. to the, the importance yeah, of yeah. You know, correctly removing people and mm. adding people en masse mm. very, very rapidly. And so that kind of um, primed my interest into mm. the challenges from a, you know, from a university perspective in the early days, but then to see yeah. how that can be applied today. And, yeah. and that really took me from the university, um, looking at Novell Network to Identity and Access Management, mm. uh, where... Mm. I then worked for a, another organisation that was, you know, a hundred percent focused on that area of identity and access management yeah. for for companies uh, and for universities using uh, technology that would onboard and offboard uh, users in a. In a, in a structured way. And I think the identity and access management piece, like that's become so important now, both in, in other spheres, but also in, in Google. And we've seen Google develop it, yeah. you know, and we're, later on we're gonna talk about the, the future of these technologies, but like for IT admins, 
the identity management, managing who the user is, how they have access, what they can access when, like Google's context aware access yeah. and things like that. Um, and now endpoint management within Google, you know, that whole area has just exploded. Yeah, but I, but I wish more organizations would look at the, the Google directory mm. and start to utilize that um, as their a lot more about, as yeah. their primary um, authentication mechanism. We're, we're, such a we're seeing that place. a lot more. Yeah, yeah we're, we, we've seen a couple of customers now move away from tools like Okta and mm -hmm. Login um, and actually use Google Cloud Identity. And we hadn't, like that Google system wasn't ready for that, you know, three or four years yeah, ago. Yeah. Um, whereas in the last couple of years, we've done a few, a good few Cloud Identity projects where like a customer give, gives their users access to Google and Google is the identity provider for everything. So they're, they're, in some cases, they're using maybe an Active Directory that they're syncing with. In some cases, they're not, yeah. um, which is interesting. And even going as far as to give it access, giving um, users access to Wi-Fi and printers and other systems, reconnecting it in with, with other systems, which is, which is great, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, because like you say, we, we wouldn't have seen that, you know, half a decade ago. The, oh the yeah, no, definitely. Sure and, you know, some of, some of the things that I used to do in the past, um, you know, working with, with universities, I was, you know, part of the team that rolled out Janet um, within the, the academic community in the UK. Uh, Janet standards stood, stood for the Joint Academic Network. Okay. And it was the bringing together to of, <laughs> it was a bringing together of all the universities. Um, okay. You know, initially through, um, yeah, you know, connectivity, but um, later on, probably about eight, 93 ish mm. um rolling out tcp ip yeah, right, so okay. when people start talking about you know the the internet and all that kind of stuff yeah, being yeah. around in the um you know the 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 late tw uh, 2000s mm. i was working on that learning about um how, you know, how it all worked and connected and work, yeah, you know yeah. very early on in the 90s so again when you come to today a lot of the stuff that we're doing now just has its yeah. you know it's foundations yeah. back back then so you kind of uh, forget how far we've come when you you know you but, but how, how far we haven't come as well so yeah. you know our house is still connected via ipv6 so connected yeah. to tvs you're still yeah. using you know tcp ip that was you know invented back in the 70s i know yeah. um yeah, you know yeah. the backbones have now moved on to ipv6 but yeah. there's still quite a lot of still not ipv4 you know, I've, yeah and, absolutely yeah and i've run into issues with that even with my local broadband where I wanted to uh, put in a new router and turn my, my Wi-Fi router into just a dumb modem. Mm -hmm. And they had to set me back to IPv4 because they couldn't do it on IPv6. Right, wow. So, yeah. you know, what will happen when that, that yeah, ceases? Yeah, yeah ceases, no, absolutely. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So they're still, they're still they're using that as a fail back and you wonder, like you say, what will happen? Yeah, no, definitely. They run out of numbers. Yeah, well, they probably have, yeah. <laughs> Which for anyone that doesn't know, that's why the upgrade to IPv4 to IPv6 is so important. I think this kind of leads nicely into, you know, we're talking about workspace there. Um, and I am interested to know, you know, my next question is sort of how, where you first came across Google Apps or Google for Business or Google for Domains, depending mm -hmm. on how far back we want to go. As we know, Google do love to rename things. Um, but my, my um, little interesting funny anecdote is that, you might not know this, uh, the infamous Eric Smith, who was CEO of, of Google, he was CEO of Novell from 1997 to 2001, and then he moved over to be CEO of Google. And I think it was around similar time. Yeah, we can't I'm not really, saying we that don't we talk about that. We don't but, talk about know. that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I, I did see Eric Smith in, uh, in some of the Novell uh, events. Really? It was, it was called Brainshare. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we used to go over to Utah. Um, every year went over to Utah. And you mentioned and Google 15, to him. And yeah, then, you yeah. Know. so I mentioned a small <laughs> company. And he's like, yeah. But he was very big into um, Java. So he brought oh, Java nice. to Novell. He, obviously, he was previously, I think he was in Sun. Went from Sun to yes, Novell and yes, then went yeah, over yeah. to yeah. Um, help Apple and then uh, Google. And that's where... Yeah, he sat on the Apple board for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's one of those, I mean, yeah, sort of founder of the, of the tech. Silicon Valley Industries, you know what I mean, one of the, the godfathers of it. Um, so, so yeah, so can you kind of remember the first time you came across Google or? Yeah, so it was Gmail or something. Yeah, it was, it was Gmail. And yeah. again, it was working within the, the university sector. Yeah. And, um, but what about workspace or the sort of, you know, the, bus the business slash education bit? Can you remember the first time you yeah. came across like, oh, Google does this for? Yeah, I mean, so, so it was, it was yeah. Google for education. Right. Or it was Google Apps for education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, Back in a previous organization, we did a lot of 
um, email migrations mm. to Microsoft Exchange. Right. Um, and it was a big part of our business. So we were doing identity and access management, it was like mm. the core thing. Yeah, yeah. But then organizations, universities were moving to large exchange systems. So mm. building them, clustering, all the kind of things that you'd want from a fail-safe yeah. perspective. So no cloud stuff. There's no cloud stuff no, back, back then at all. Works, no. um, we're, we're probably before BPAS as well. Even yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 completely. Yeah. And um, I remember one of our sales guys, one of our probably more pessimistic sales guys, um, came back into the office and just went, you know, came up to me and said, Paul, email migration business is dead. I was like, <laughs> why is that? He says, Google, so we've got a customer. It might actually be over here. I think um, UCD were one of the first to yeah, go, yeah, to they go were Google. One of the early adopters. I think UCD was one of his uh, one of his clients, but he came back and just said, "Look, you know, it's it's dead. Google have brought out an email solution, mm. and uh, it's free." I was like, "You what? It's free. <laughs> it's free for academia completely. Yeah. No, you know, no and at catches, the time, no nothing. Microsoft had no free. Microsoft education. had nothing. You know, yeah, there was yeah, no. Yeah. I think later on, Microsoft brought out. Um, they had free. Life, life for education. It was yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, they had to. Cause and that was. Google I think that was um, Hotmail. It was like a, a Hotmail version. Mm -hmm. And then they obviously went over to uh, three six five uh, mm -hmm. eventually. But uh, yeah, Google were the first. They went so into he education. was concerned that he was concerned that his yeah. his livelihood, his yeah, his yeah, his yeah. kind of revenue that he was getting sure. from these large uh, projects was just going to disappear overnight. And so, yeah, we, we looked into it. Um, I looked into you know what exactly Google were doing. Mm -hmm. Had conversations with Google because they were one of our customers, and so we were interested to see mm -hmm. how it was going to work. There was no, no migration tools. Uh, Google had a, an approach which was, don't worry about it. You know, yeah. Email's not really that important. It's a, it's a transient yeah. communication mechanism. The, I remember in the early days, they used to be like, just tell customers, don't migrate your email. Absolutely, yeah. Even yeah. businesses, don't yeah. you yeah. don't need it. That used it's, to be yeah. their go-to thing. And yeah. then it was like, well, if they have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and it was like, I, I'd almost never come across a company that was like, oh, sure, we'll just leave yeah. our email No, there. definitely, definitely. You know. But um, yeah, so he was worried. Um, we looked into the, um, the product, saw that it was just a case of, you give them your domain, mm. as in the domain name for your yeah, organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And generally it was just the student one. So it would be student mm. dot whatever, whatever dot AC yeah, dot UK. Yeah. And uh, within seconds you're up and running. Mm. You create the users, so there was an API to create the users. You could create 10,000 users like, like that. that. Yeah. Um, and it was just a no brainer. And so I kind of like looking at this and thinking, right, okay, so if you can create the users, identity and access management, mm. tick, we've got an opportunity there. Mm. Um, what about email migration? Because people are going to want to migrate. Again, Google's response was, don't worry about it. Yeah. They didn't have any tools, they didn't have anything. But I mean, the team even, I mean, me and you would remember back then, I remember the sales team for Google for EMEA was like three people mm -hmm. or four people. Do you know what I mean? So the amount of people working on the Google app side of things, yeah. certainly in the sales, you know, pushing the product was very limited. Yeah, I think there was one person in, in education yeah. and, uh, and she would go around and promote convince, and, yeah. and, and it wouldn't convince the universities, convince the students. Oh, and then the students would then lobby <coughs> at the university and say, well, we want this because yeah, yeah. we don't want this well, rubbish okay. thing. Yeah, yeah. We want to, you know, it's online. They probably free. use Gmail anyway. Absolutely, of course yeah, they yeah. were. Um, so yeah, so we looked at the uh, APIs and thought, actually, there's an opportunity here to you know, to create a product. And I've so, always so wanted Google, to create. Google had APIs at the time. Google had yeah. all the APIs. They were all free. They're all um, publicly they available. For them, so. They weren't charging <laughs> you know, thousands of pounds for the, for the privilege. Um, and you know, went to the, the board of the company and said, look, I think this is an opportunity that we should look at. And they were mm. like, no, mm. we are, you know, we're a Microsoft organization now. That's what we're, doing. Um, yeah. we're into uh, identity and access management. We're going to leave that and this is our focus so I was kind of you know a little bit disheartened but then thought mm. well this is an opportunity for me yeah, yeah um, and yeah. so looked into it had a conversation with a developer uh, colleague of mine developer friend of mine who used to work with historically had moved out and had gone back to a, a university he was doing a uh, a, 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 a PhD mm. in um, sustain, uh, sustainable technologies and all that kind yeah. of stuff and uh, had a conversation and said, look, I think there's an opportunity here. And so we uh, got together and started looking at how that could be done. Mm. And that was the, the embryonic idea of a, a migration tool huh. that, uh, that I created. So yeah, it was a scary times because, yeah. you know, uh, Google- So you got back 12, 13? It was 2008. Yeah. 
Yes, you know, yeah. I remember the, you know, I don't remember the exact dates. But no, I, yeah, I, I but remember yeah. the, the conversation like it was. Uh, well, I remember the, the partner program was like 2008, 2009. So that sounds, that sounds like. A yeah, there was program. no, there was no yeah. partner program. Yeah. There was no, I think partners came via the Postini route, if I remember yeah. rightly. They had, yeah. Postini had a. They'd a acquired Postini. Route. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they had some partners with them. They're like, what do we do with these guys? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's just, just uh, again, using my, you know, desire, I want to solve people's problems and knowing yeah. that migration even though google were turning around and saying well it's not an issue don't worry yeah, about yeah, it yeah. you I knew it was say, i knew yeah. that there was going to be customers yeah. eventually um you've got from a, a just, just from a university perspective university staff weren't moving mm. because they had decades of data you know yeah. data and theses yeah. and all kinds of things yeah. that were in the their emails i mean the 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 students it made sense you could have a student yeah. set up and not move so you just transition through so yeah. year one bank brand new system you know they were yeah. they were happy it was and in a few um, years you have everybody but as university started to want staff to join the system yeah. um mm. it became you know a problem and i knew that there'd be a an and, opportunity for a, and how a did you tool. end up then like like the migration tool you end, you end up in in um cts mm -hmm. how, how did that how did you, how did that connect up those those sort of founding people that you, yeah so uh, you know them yeah so the, so the 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 founders of the organization we all worked to, together and you know I'd, I'd always had a dream of creating a um, so did some of them work a in product the other organization or did you just yeah yeah so the, we yeah. all worked in the in the previous organization oh, we all okay. had um, you know, I had a desire to create a, a new business, um, mm. wanted to create a new product mm. in the company that I was in, that didn't work out, so yeah, yeah, they weren't needed to create this new entity um, and a new product, but uh, you know, like anything, you need funds. Yeah, you need some sure. money to actually yeah. do that, you need yeah. money to pay the developers, you need yeah. money to do you and, know, the, advertise and, the and development stuff can take. I could take years. Months, years, yeah, do you know absolutely. what I mean? So, yeah, you need that, that downtime to be yeah. able to do that. So, fund. you know, again, going back to the previous thing, what would I say to myself back then? Yeah. Um, is It would have been a case of believing yourself. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we wouldn't have needed as many people in the organisation yeah. early on. Yeah. Um, you know, the funds weren't absolutely necessary to get it off the ground you didn't yeah, need masses yeah. of money but you didn't um, know, you know but you didn't know, you know, um, know and so. i was working i was the technical director of this organization so yeah, yeah. you know i had a reasonably good salary yeah. um just bought a, a new house i had two mm. young kids yeah um and so there's worry you know if i move if i leave and yeah, follow yeah, my yeah. dreams and start yeah. something new Will I be able to Will I be able to the the table? Table? Will I be able to the Can I afford nappies and all those yeah, kind of things? Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's a big risk. And so you know, if you spread that risk, yeah, then you can. Yeah, uh, naturally. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Makes sense. makes sense. As a business person, I totally understand <laughs> that. And as a parent, yes, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, understand yeah. both sides of, of that coin. Um, so you've kind of answered my other question, which was like, what made you sort of tie yourself to Google in terms of your your um you know your your professional job but i think uh, you know you, you I, definitely I think, sort of answered that yeah, in, yeah but like, I, th I think um this this is going to sound quite negative on me but google is an easier system to develop to you know if you if you want to create something for the microsoft community mm. or the microsoft environment a you've got a lot of competition yeah. because it's a yeah. much much bigger market mm. but it's also a much more complex system system yeah. so you've got you know back then you have servers to interact with even with office 365 now but like that's like that's not surprising it, like that doesn't just, surprise it's me just in complicated, any way you know, you know what i mean from having even using the two tools yeah you know? yeah so, like so that's you know, not you've, surprising. you've got all the desktop stuff, stuff to, yeah. to deal with yeah, yeah, um yeah. And so if you want to do things and make them work well mm. You've got the servers to consider. You then got the desktops to consider. You've got, if you've got a desktop to consider, you've got people to consider. Yeah. And as soon as you start giving software to people that are just what you know end users, it becomes a lot more complicated. Yeah. And so that's true. You know, for me, wanting to get to the market quicker, get something out quicker, mm. it really was getting to you know an environment which was cloud first, cloud only. Yeah. yeah. On, you know, in a browser. Yeah. 
that would then reduce any of the complexities. Mm. Um, I did eventually create a, a Microsoft offering, and I did eventually start mm. developing tools for the desktop, but they were cumbersome. They were, you know, mm. they were complicated. Yeah. Um, Synchronising calendars between different systems, those kind of things become so many more headaches. harder and you know mm. uglier. And that's where your support calls come through, and yeah. that's where the complaints yeah. start costs, to come in, and costs yeah, start yeah, to yeah, rise. Yeah, so yeah. for me, uh, developing to the Google workspace yeah. um, environment. While it is now quite a, um, I won't say it's complex system, but it's a it's, it's much more, more feature rich yeah, yeah, system. More complex, yeah. um, it's a lot easier because you, you you've got more control mm. over how it's being used and managed because it's it's in the cloud. You know, it's on yeah, a web yeah. browser. There's no strange interactions with different versions of operating systems, different versions of Outlook and, and those yeah, kind of things. So yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the reason why I got into the Google Workspace. You know, focusing on Google Workspace. It's a, it's probably a never. Yeah, yeah. I'd never go and do anything for uh, Microsoft because of just the complexity. You would need a very large organization yeah. just just to support the end customers. So yeah, for me, yeah. I like to be um, a lightweight. You know, lightweight organization, very lean, um, and be able to deliver and develop you know, real value very, very quickly. Yeah, I think you can develop a lot quicker as well. Yeah. Out, out of interest, how did that, for that initial tool for you guys, the migration tool, how long was that from when you sort of like decided to start to like actually have a product for the market like was it six months or a year yeah, it was or two probably Robert, about six months yeah yeah Jesus, that is um, you couldn't imagine that in the microsoft world no um but it was still a desktop application sure yeah um but yeah. it was it was given to system administrators yeah, yeah. so I'd, I'd say by the time we had a, a prototype that worked you're looking at about six months probably first mm. customers probably about the same time frame yeah. um but i would say that if you if, if if I cast my mind back from a marketing perspective, there was a lot of things that I was talking about that weren't actually quite ready, quite yeah. weren't real. So so you so you'd create a That sounds yeah. like startup stuff. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, <laughs> like, and you got to you've got to get know. to that situation. So yeah, you know you yeah. would create you would create a tool, you create the prototype and then you would be having conversations with Mm. Prospective customers to say, yeah, absolutely, no problem. Yeah. This is developers. Exactly what can it does. you get that done? <laughs> yeah, and then and then a couple of minutes later, turn around and saying, you know, is this real? Can we get that? And so yeah. my mind, because I understand APIs, I understand. Mm. By then, I understood how the Google system worked. Mm. Mm. I was able to understand what a customer wanted, yeah, and say whether or not it was achievable yeah. or not, yeah based on the constraints that you had from what the Google APIs were giving. Yeah. And so when we had the conversations with customers, we would say, yeah, absolutely, that is something that we can do. Yeah. And then busy, busy, busy away and busy create away. something. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think as well, you know, you've, with, 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 with Google, it's, it's possible to do that. And in those early days, customers were kind of at a different stage. They knew that the Google system was newer. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and they kind of, I think, accepted to a degree that they were the early adopters and maybe the tools and the, yeah. and the Google system wasn't as quite developed. Yeah, and, I mean, the, you know. I, it's interesting that the early platform that we picked as a source was Novell Groupwise. Yeah. Um, so that for me was kind of like a double-edged sword. I, you know, it was a product that I had used, I'd worked with, I'd developed, mm. um, I'd been over to conferences to talk about it. Um, yeah, it was yeah. the competitor to Microsoft Exchange. Everybody was going Microsoft Exchange, mm. but Novell had, Novell Groupwise, they purchased it from WordPerfect when Novell yeah, bought yeah, yeah. WordPerfect. For those who don't know, WordPerfect was the word processor yeah, back yeah. in the day, before uh, Microsoft, before Microsoft Word. Word. Um, that means it's possible to be replaced. <laughs> Very true. Um, and, you know, we, we picked uh, Groupwise because people were moving away from it to mm. Exchange but you still had these die hard fans. technical people yeah. and fans of Novell technology who just did not want to move over to Microsoft yeah. so they were looking for an alternative and so Google was the perfect alternative yeah. and so by us creating a migration tool for Groupwise A I understood how Groupwise worked so I, I understood all the kind of like the back doors that you had to use in order to gain access to other people's email. Yeah. Um, you know, because there are impersonations that you've got to do when you're accessing emails. Uh, you, you don't ask people for the passwords. You just 
user property yeah, method, yeah. method to gain access to it. So I understood how all that worked. And then moving it into Google, it just felt right because that's what customers were doing at that particular moment in time. We also added um, the ability to extract file attachments into what was Google Drive. It was Google Docs at the time, so mm. we only might we only moved out documents and uh, PDFs. But yeah. you know, having that ability to split a migration was. Uh,